Welcome to Brainwaves and Breakthroughs. Hey everyone and welcome back. It seems like everywhere I turn lately, it's true crime this and true crime that. Yeah. And you know what? I have to admit, I'm kind of into it. Right. But it's gotten me wondering, like, why are we so fascinated by these stories? Why are we drawn to the dark side of humanity? It's a question that's been bugging me. And I'm so glad we're diving into this today. Well, you know, it's interesting because this obsession with true crime, it goes way beyond just like a recent trend. Oh, really? Yeah, we're talking like ancient civilizations, yeah. medieval ballads, 19th century authors. Oh. Like people have been captivated by these stories of real life crime for centuries. So this isn't just another like, you know, fleeting fad. Not at all. And actually, you've given us a pretty fascinating mix of sources to kind of dive into this. Okay. We've got articles, research papers, even some marketing data. Interesting. All pointing to how deeply ingrained true crime is in our culture. Okay. I am ready to unpack this. Let's do it. First things first, why are we so drawn to true crime in the first place? Seriously, it's everywhere. Podcasts, documentaries, TV shows, books. Yeah. The numbers are huge. I think there's definitely something about that classic true crime formula. Okay. You know, the crime, the clues, the investigation, the resolution. Right. It just hooks us. It's like we're all hardwired to crave these satisfying narratives. You yeah. Know, where at least in the story, justice is served. Right. It's it, We all become like armchair detectives, oh, like sorry. trying to solve the case along with the investigators. Exactly. It's fun. It's engaging. But think about it for a second. Okay. Sometimes the real world can feel pretty chaotic, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. True crime with its clear-cut, you know, good guys and bad guys. Right. It can offer a sense of order that we might be craving in our own lives. I can see that. Yeah. It's like stepping into a world where, like, things make sense, yeah. where actions have consequences. Totally. But it's not just about solving puzzles, is it? There's something about the darkness, like the psychology of it all, that draws us in, too. Absolutely. True crime gives us this peek into the darker side of humanity. Yeah. You know, the motivations behind these horrific acts. Yeah. All from the safety of our couch. Right. It's like we're fascinated by the forbidden. Right. But we wouldn't want to experience it firsthand. Exactly. And speaking of experiencing things firsthand, why do we watch true crime shows? Talks about this idea of relative luck. Oh, yeah. Have you ever noticed that? Definitely. Like, you're listening to this. Right. Because you're interested in true crime. Yeah. But maybe you're also dealing with some personal stuff. Right. And hearing about someone else's struggles that are even worse. Yeah. Can almost make our own problems feel a bit more manageable. Wow. That's a really interesting perspective. It's almost like a coping mechanism. Yeah. Like finding comfort in the fact that things could always be worse. Totally. So we've got the puzzle solving aspect, the need for order, the fascination with the dark side. What else? Well, one of the articles, The History of True Crime, points out that this whole true crime thing is not new at all. Okay. In fact, some of the earliest documented true crime stories come from ancient Egypt. What? Ancient Egyptians were into true crime. Imagine that. That's wild. There's this papyrus from 1800 BCE. Wow. Detailing the murder of a government official. Wow. It's like they were already laying the groundwork for the true crime genre we know and love today. It's amazing how this fascination with crime has persisted right. like across cultures and throughout history. Yeah, and as that article explains, the way we consume true crime has evolved along with society itself. Okay. Think about those medieval ballads right. turning criminals into folk heroes. That is wild. It's like they were the original true crime celebrity. Exactly, and then in the 19th century, you have authors like William Roughhead okay. meticulously documenting notorious crimes, really shaping the genre as we know it today. Right. But then, boom, the digital age hits. Yeah. And true crime explodes. Innovation in true crime really gets into this. Right. Podcasts and streaming services well, it made true crime accessible to everyone. Exactly. And suddenly we have this huge surge in content. Yeah. It's almost overwhelming how much is out there. It is. And with that explosion of content, things started to shift. Okay. We went from like shorter episodic formats. Right. To these long form documentaries. Yes. That are like mini series. Yeah. Drawing you in with their narratives and keeping you hooked oh, for it hours. Totally shows like making a murderer and the staircase come to mind. Yes. I remember binge watching those. Yeah. 
getting completely absorbed in the cases. That's what that article was saying. Yeah. These documentaries are using techniques from fiction right. to craft compelling narratives, keeping us on the edge of our seats. Totally. But then there's Underbelly. Okay. This Australian show that sticks to a more traditional, dramatized format. Huh, interesting. And the article even pointed out that its newest season vanishing act actually went shorter which is kind of ironic. Yeah, like a little rebellion against the trend. Yeah. A throwback to the classic true crime style. Totally. But even as the format evolves, the core fascination remains. Right, It's yeah. a testament to the enduring power of true crime. Yeah. But with all this focus on entertainment, it makes you wonder about the ethics of it all, right? Absolutely. It may be entertaining and thrilling, but is true crime ever ethical? That's a question posed by Amanda Knox, right. who was thrust into the spotlight of true crime herself. Yeah, that's a powerful perspective. Yeah, and it's interesting that she's now deeply involved in exploring the ethical side of this genre. Right. That had such a huge impact on her own life. It makes you think about the potential harm that can come from turning real-life tragedies into entertainment. Totally. We're talking about real people, real families yeah. who have experienced unimaginable loss. And that's just one piece of the puzzle. The true crime genre is popular, but is it ethical? Yeah. Also raises concerns about how these stories can be exploited for profit. Right. Like, think about those true crime t-shirts with catchy slogans about serial killers yeah. or merchandise based on real-life murders. Right. It's disturbing how some people are profiting from these tragedies. Yeah. But it's not just about merchandise, right? Mm. The, the article also talks about how certain types of victims, often white women, right. are overrepresented in true crime, yeah. leading to a skewed perception of whose stories matter. It's like there's this ideal victim narrative right. that gets perpetuated, mm -hmm. and it can reinforce existing biases, yeah. pushing certain stories to the forefront while others get ignored. And that connects back to what Phillips was arguing in the article about how this overrepresentation mirrors the biases we see in news media. Yeah. It's like this vicious cycle where the stories that get the most attention often fit a certain mold, further marginalizing those who don't fit the narrative. It's definitely a complex issue. And it raises important questions about who has the power in shaping these narratives. Right. And whose voices are being amplified or silenced in the process. Exactly. But while there are like legitimate concerns about the ethical implications of true crime. Right. There's also a flip side to consider. Yeah. Why do we love true crime? And the impact of true crime on society highlight how this genre can actually be a force for good. It's true. Think about all the cold cases that have been cracked thanks to renewed interest sparked by true crime podcasts or documentaries. It's amazing. It's like this collective effort yeah. where uh. listeners become amateur detectives, right. pouring over details, sharing theories, and sometimes even uncovering crucial information yeah. that helps bring justice to long forgotten cases. It's a testament to the power of this genre to engage and mobilize audiences. It is. And it's not just about solving crimes. True crime can also raise awareness of injustice, yeah. shine a light on systemic issues, Absolutely. and even prompt positive change. It's like a double-edged sword. It can exploit and sensationalize, yeah. but it can also empower and inspire action. Exactly. And let's not forget the emotional aspect. Right. For some people, true crime offers a safe space to process difficult emotions, to confront their fears, yeah. and to find a sense of community with others who share their interest in this often dark subject matter. Totally. It's like a shared experience, a way of connecting with others yeah. over something that might considered taboo or unsettling in other contexts. Right. But it's important to remember that there's a real human cost to these crimes. Absolutely. And as we continue our deep dive, yeah. it's essential to keep that human element at the forefront of our minds. Agreed. So we've established that true crime has this undeniable hold on us. Yeah. But there's another angle to this phenomenon that we haven't touched on yet. You mean how brands are getting in on the action? Exactly. It seems like everyone's trying to cash in on this true crime craze. And it's not just the podcasters selling merch. Right. We're talking big brands. Yep. From meal kits to home security systems yeah. who are using true crime to reach new customers. Why brands should sponsor true crime podcasts breaks down why this genre is such a marketing goldmine. Okay. For one thing, true crime fans are some of the most attentive and engaged listeners out there. And I can see why yeah. <laughs> when you're hooked on a true crime podcast, right. you're hanging on every word. Yeah. Eager for the next clue, the next twist in the story. Yeah. You're totally immersed in the world that the podcast creates. Exactly. And that level of engagement is a marketer's dream. I bet. 
Plus, how high-profile cases can expand true crime podcast audiences revealed that a whopping 78% of listeners don't even mind the ads in these podcasts. Really? That's wild. Most people I know skip ads whenever they can. I know. So what is it about true crime that makes listeners more receptive to marketing? Well, for starters, true crime podcasts often have very loyal fan bases. Okay. Listeners trust the hosts, they value their insights, and they're invested in the stories being told. So it's like an extension of that trust. If they trust the podcast, they're more likely to trust the brands that are sponsoring it. Exactly. And then there's the social media aspect. Oh, right. True crime fans are very active online. Yeah. Sharing theories, discussing cases, and recommending their favorite podcasts to their friends. So it's like free advertising for the brands that are sponsoring those podcasts. Exactly. Room mouth marketing at its finest. Wow. And let's not forget the sheer diversity of true crime content. Right. You've got podcasts focused on serial killers, cold cases, wrongful convictions, historical crimes. Yeah, there's a lot. You name it. It's a smorgasbord of subgenres, yeah. each with its own dedicated fan base. That's right. And brands are getting really savvy about targeting these specific niches oh. within the true crime world. Yeah. It's not just about slapping an ad on any true crime podcast. Hey. It's about finding the right fit. Totally. The podcast that resonates with the brand's target audience and marketing goals. It's strategic marketing at its finest. And we've seen some pretty impressive examples of this. Like what? Well, why brands should sponsor true crime podcasts mentions a few successful partnerships. Okay. Like HelloFresh sponsoring. And that's why we drink. Huh. Interesting. It's a podcast that blends true crime with paranormal stories. Okay. Which seems like a clever way to tap into those anxieties. Yeah. And offer a comforting solution in the form of pre-portioned meal kits. It's brilliant. Isn't it? They're playing on the emotions evoked by the podcast. Right. And positioning their product as a stress-free solution for listeners who might be feeling a little too spooked after listening to a chilling true crime story. And then there's Simple Safe, the home security company, yeah. which has partnered with podcasts like Case File True Crime. Right. These podcasts often feature stories about break-ins, stalkers, right. and other unsettling crimes. Yeah. So it's a natural fit for a company that sells home security systems. They're capitalizing on the listeners heightened awareness of safety and security, offering a solution to the very fears that these podcasts are tapping into. It's like marketing 101, but with a true crime twist. Exactly. And it's not always about playing on fear, best fiends. The mobile game company has had success sponsoring Southern Fried True Crime, a podcast that explores historical and contemporary true crime in the South. Interesting. It's a lighter take on true crime, offering a distraction from some of the heavier topics often covered in the genre. It's about providing a mental break, a moment of levity. Yeah. And it's a smart move for a mobile game company that's trying to attract users who are looking for a bit of entertainment and escapism. And then there's Daily Harvest, the health food company partnering with Women in Crime, a podcast that focuses on female criminals, victims, and those who work in the criminal justice system. Yeah. They're really recognizing the power of niche marketing. Right. Targeting a specific audience that aligns with their brand values and product offerings. It's fascinating to see how brands are getting creative. I Leveraging the power of true crime to connect with consumers in new and unexpected ways. It really highlights how this genre has permeated our culture. Totally. And even infiltrated the world of marketing. It's everywhere. It's incredible how a cultural phenomenon like true crime can intersect with the business world. Yeah. And create these unique marketing opportunities. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. But as we delve deeper into this world. Yeah. It's important to keep in mind the bigger picture, right? the social and ethical implications of this fascination with real life crime. Absolutely. So with that in mind, yeah. let's shift our focus back to the listener. Okay. You've heard all about the history, the psychology, the mm -hmm. ethics, and even the marketing of true crime. But now it's time to connect these ideas to your own experience. Right, because at the end of the day, it's about you, the listener, and how you engage with this genre. Exactly. So let's dive into that next. Sounds good. So far, we've explored like the history, the psychology, the ethics, even the marketing of true crime. Yeah, it's a lot. But where do we go from here? Right. You know, knowing both the allure and the potential pitfalls of this genre. Yeah. What does this mean for you as a listener? That's the big question, isn't it? We've unpacked a lot of information. Yeah. And it can feel a bit overwhelming. Right. But I think one of the most important 
takeaways is that we don't have to be passive consumers of true crime. Right. Like we can be more mindful about how we engage with these stories. Exactly. It starts with a shift in perspective. Okay. Instead of just being entertained. Right. We could be more critical and aware of the real human stories behind these narratives. Yeah. It's like remembering that these aren't just characters in a story. Yeah. They're real people right. who have experienced unimaginable trauma. Yeah. And their lives extend far beyond oh, right. the confines of a podcast or a documentary. Absolutely. And as we listen to these stories, we can start asking ourselves some critical questions. Totally. Like, what are the motivations of the storytellers? Like, whose voices are being amplified and whose are being silenced? And are they presenting a balanced view of the events? Yeah. Are they relying on credible sources? Yeah. Are they sensationalizing the story just for entertainment value? Those are all great questions to ask yourself as you listen. Yeah. It's about being an active participant in the process, not just passively absorbing whatever is being presented. Right. And it's also about recognizing that true crime has a tendency to focus on the perpetrators. Oh, yeah. Often turning them into these larger than life figures. Yeah, for sure. But we have to remember that behind every crime, there are victims who have suffered immensely. Right. It's about shifting the focus. Yeah. Recognizing the human cost of these crimes. Absolutely. And acknowledging the pain and loss that these victims and their families have endured. It's about empathy, right? Yeah. Putting ourselves in their shoes. Yeah. And trying to understand the impact that these crimes have had on their lives. Exactly. And as we become more mindful consumers, we can start to demand more from the creators of true crime content. We can encourage them to prioritize ethical storytelling, to center the voices of victims, and to engage with these complex issues thoughtfully and responsibly. It's like we have a responsibility not only to ourselves as consumers, right, but also to the people whose stories are being told. We can make choices that support content that aligns with our values. Totally. That prioritizes ethical storytelling and that contributes to a deeper understanding of crime and justice. And that brings us back to you, the listener. Yes. What are some things that stand out to you from our conversation so far? Yeah. What are some questions you're asking yourself about the true crime content you consume? Right. What are your thoughts about the future of this genre? I know for me personally, I've started to be more aware of the potential biases in true crime stories. Mm -hmm. I find myself asking, who's telling the story? Right. And what's their perspective? That's such a valuable insight. Yeah. It's so easy to get swept up in the narrative. It is. But it's important to remember that every story is told from a particular point of view. Right. right. And that point of view can shape how the story is presented and even influence our own perceptions of the events. Totally. It's like a reminder to be critical thinkers, to question what we're being told uh -huh. and to seek out multiple perspectives. And that's something we can all do. Yeah. Regardless of how much true crime we consume. Right. We can all be more mindful, more critical, and more empathetic Yeah. in our engagement with this genre. And maybe, just maybe, as we become more conscious consumers of true crime, yeah, we can start to steer this genre toward a more responsible and ethical future. I hope so. But with all that said, there's another side to this that I think is worth exploring. Okay. We've talked about the dark side of true crime. Right. But it also has this potential to ignite real change in the world. I see where you're going with this. Yeah. It's not just about being a passive consumer. Mm -hmm. It's about using our interest in true crime as a catalyst for action. Exactly. What if we volunteered our time to organizations that support victims of crime or donated to groups working to prevent violence and promote restorative justice right. or even became advocates for criminal justice reform, working to address the systemic issues that contribute to crime in the first place? Those are great ideas. It's about taking all this energy and passion we have for true crime right. and directing it towards something meaningful and impactful. It's about turning our interest into action. Yeah. Using our knowledge and empathy to make a tangible difference in the lives of others. Exactly. It's about recognizing that true crime isn't just a form of entertainment. Right. It's a reflection of real world problems that require our attention and our action. And that, I believe, is the most valuable takeaway from our deep dive today. I think so, too. It's not just about consuming true crime. It's about engaging with it on a deeper level. Yeah. Asking critical questions and using what we've learned to create a more just and compassionate world. I couldn't agree more so to our listener. We encourage you to keep exploring the world of true crime. Yes. But do so with a critical and compassionate eye.
Absolutely. And if you're inspired to make a difference, to channel your fascination into action, there are countless ways to do so. Yeah. The resources are out there, the organizations are waiting, and the need is great. Be the change you want to see in the world. Beautifully said. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into the true crime craze. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery, and we hope you'll tune in again soon for another fascinating exploration of the world around us. Wow. We really went deep on this one. Yeah, it really makes you think, doesn't it? It does. We've explored the history, yeah. the psychology, the marketing, yeah. even the ethical considerations right. surrounding true crime. It's amazing how this one genre can spark so many different conversations. It's been quite a journey. It has. And as with any good deep dive, we've right. surfaced with a lot more than just facts and figures. We've uncovered some thought-provoking questions. Definitely. And I hope our listener has gained a new perspective on their own true crime consumption. Definitely. So as we wrap things up. What are some key takeaways that you think our listener should hold on to? Well, first and foremost, I hope they've come to appreciate the multifaceted nature of true crime. Okay. It's not just a form of entertainment. Right. It's a reflection of our culture, our values, yeah. and our deepest fascinations. It's like a mirror to society, yeah. revealing both our darkest impulses right. and our desire for justice and understanding. Exactly. And I also hope they've developed a more critical eye Okay. when it comes to consuming true crime content. Yeah. It's about being aware of potential biases, Yeah. the ethical considerations, yes. and the very real human stories behind the narratives. It's about asking those tough questions. Yeah. Yeah. Who benefits from this story? Whose voices are being amplified? Right. And whose are being silenced? Is this a responsible and ethical portrayal of the events? Precisely. And finally, I hope our listener recognizes their own power as a consumer. Okay. They have a choice in what they watch, read, and listen to. They can choose to support content that aligns with their values. Absolutely. That prioritizes ethical storytelling. Yes. And that contributes to a deeper understanding of crime and justice. Exactly. We can all encourage a shift mm -hmm. towards more ethical storytelling. Right. A greater emphasis on the voices of victims. Yeah. And a deeper understanding of the complexities of crime and justice. It's a tall order, but I think it's achievable if we all do our part. I agree. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive okay. into the true crime craze. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. And we hope you'll tune in again soon for another fascinating exploration of the world around us.